Hi, my name is Rene, your birding guide from Brazil, and today I'm gonna tell you about the six species of blue macaws and what happened with the Spix and Glaucus macaws. Are they still alive? Is there hope for them? Maybe. So check this video because I'm going to teach you how to differentiate them and explain why some of them are already extinct. Our first blue macaw is the largest parrot in the world. The hyacinth macaw can be found mostly in central Brazil with its biggest population in Pantanal. This spectacular bird has a beautiful cobalt blue plumage with patches of yellow bear skin around the eyes and on the lower mandible. This last aspect is key to differentiate it from the other blue macaws. Its main diet consists of palm nuts from two species of palm, the acuri and the bocaiuva. This food specialization can be a real problem, especially if there is habitat loss which turns into food shortage and consequently a population decline. The poaching for the illegal wildlife trade had serious consequences in the population numbers of these charismatic species. And that's why this species is classified as vulnerable by IUCN. Thankfully, because of the efforts of a conservation project in Pantanal, the hyacinth macaw population is growing back. Lears or indigo macaw. This special macaw was rediscovered in northeast Brazil in 1979. It was present on zoos and private collections in Europe and North America, but nobody really knew its true orange in Brazil. It is quite smaller than its cousin Hyacinth, has the same cobalt blue plumage on the back and tail, but the head, neck and breast feathers are greenish blue and the yellow patches of bare skin have different shapes from Hyacinths. The indigo macaw is endemic to the dry Caatinga biome and feeds mostly on the fruits of an endemic palm called Likuri. Again, this food specialization makes it more prone to population declines when there is the cut down of the palm stands it depends on. Another critical factor that reduces its numbers is related to its breeding preference. This species breeds on sandstone cliffs, which can facilitate the removal of eggs and chicks from the more accessible nests by poachers. And that's why this species is classified as endangered by IUCN. The protection of indigo's macaw breeding sites has led to a significant population growth in the past 10 years. Wow. 
Glaucus Macau. This Macau used to inhabit the gallery forest of Paraná, Paraguay and Uruguay rivers in Brazil, South Paraguay and Argentina and also Uruguay. Almost certainly extinct, the Glaucus Macau had only two acceptable records in the early 20th century. This picture was taken at the Buenos Aires Zoo, Argentina, in 1936 and presumably was the last living Glaucus Macau in captivity. Very similar to the indigo macaw, the Glaucus macaw was a bit smaller. Descriptions say the head, neck and breast feathers were even more greenish and almost grayish than indigo's, and the yellow bare skin patches were of the same shape and color. This macaw also had a specialized diet of just one kind of palm fruit and the large stands of the Chatai palm were cut down by early colonists as they regarded these palm stands as good soil indicators. Some say that the main factor of its decline was the trapping and hunting, which could be facilitated by the birds' preferences of nesting in the banks of the large Uruguay and Paraguay rivers. Recent fossil studies indicate a possible contiguous distribution in central Brazil of both macaws 10,000 years ago, which indicates that indigo macaw is a race or a subspecies of Glaucus macaw. The Spix macaw is the smallest member of the blue macaws, belonging to a different genera. It is also called the little blue macaw. The whole body plumage is blue, the head and neck are grey, and the tail is longer than any other macaw in relation to its body size. The Spix macaw is endemic to the dry Caatinga biome of northeast Brazil, where Brazil's poorest population live, far away from Rio de Janeiro or the Amazon as the movie Rio claims it to be. Very little is known about its original distribution and habits. Early records say it inhabited the riparian forest of the large San Francisco River and its smaller affluents, which have been greatly reduced in the last 50 years. It is believed that the Spix Macau main territory was where it is today one of the largest artificial dams in Brazil, the Sobradinho Dam. Built in 1970, without any environmental studies, this dam is probably what caused its extinction. Once what survived of the original population was systematically caught and sold by poachers. Thanks to the Sheikh Saud bin Mohammed, the only one kind and rich enough to afford buying all the very expensive Spix macaws that were spread all over the world in private collections and creating a breeding program for conservation matters. This initiative more than doubled the population number in a few years later. Now there are enough birds in captivity for a reintroduction project in the habitat of the last known wild individual. This is a rare footage of the last male Spix macaw in the wild, when it was rediscovered in 1990 by a research group of Brazilian ornithologists. This last male was closely monitored by biologists and soon they were able to verify a close relationship of the last Spix macaw with one blue-winged macaw. The efforts to reintroduce a female of the same species failed, and this last bird of an extinct population disappeared in the year 2000. No one knows what really happened to him. 
blue-throated macaw. This macaw is endemic to a small area of north-central Bolivia known as Beni Savanna. There, this macaw is called Barba Azul in Spanish, meaning blue beard. This macaw is easily confused by the widespread blue and gold macaw. The main morphological differences are the size, a bit smaller than the blue and gold, and the blue feathers on the throat. Critically endangered, the blue-throated macaw wild population is estimated at just 350 individuals. The blue-throated macaw depends on the motaku palm that grows on these forest islands and feeds primarily on the motaku palm nuts. The same, the hyacinth macaw feeds on Pantanal. Apart from the habitat loss, its population decline is a result of ruthless trapping. Especially in the early 80s, when 390 birds were recorded in the international pet trade. The local conservation project is adding nest boxes on the blue-throated macaw habitats to decrease the competition with the blue and gold macaw and other animals for natural cavities. And this is working out already, as the population is indeed increasing. Blue and gold macaw. This is the most widespread species of the macaws. Inhabits savannas and open fields with scattered trees and palms. Very common at central Brazil, where it favors the large stands of palms on wetlands called veredas. It has a striking plumage, with mostly blue on the back, wings and tail with beautiful yellow belly and breast, contrasting with a black throat, green forehead, and a white face with small lines of tiny black feathers. These wonderful and intelligent birds mate for life, and a long life of 30 to 40 years in the wild and staggering 60 to 80 years in captivity. Please don't buy birds or any kind of animals from illegal sources. If you want to help any of the existing blue macaws conservation projects, check the links in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, just press the subscribe button to get more nature and bird videos every week.